in a few words sum up the meaning of life to you don't take nothing for granted and love everybody that comes into your life even the nights. yeah you gotta give them a chance don't you forgiveness because otherwise if you carry hatred around you're never gonna be happy hatred is like drinking poison and expecting yeah. it to hurt the other person yeah. right the meaning of life muslim spoken word what are we doing here and where are we gonna go it's like we just woke up one morning and then it's welcome to the show don't ask any questions just go with the flow make as much money as you can and try your best not to get broke copy everything you see on the tv from the hairstyles to the clothes and don't think too often just do exactly as you're told and if you ever get confused then just turn towards the alcohol you'll still hear your thoughts then just turn up the radio as you learn to live a lifestyle of drugs, sex and rock and roll Hedonism But in all honesty, I just need to know Is there more to the cycle than growing and getting old? Living and dying just to leave behind a happy home And a whole lot of property that somebody else is going to own I just really need to know before the casket's closed Cause I'm not willing to gamble with my soul Nor am I ready to take any chances These are just simple life questions And I'm just searching for some answers Like what are we doing here? And what is our purpose? I'd say I'm an agnostic atheist, but I do believe in the power of certain religions given it brings community and guidelines or purpose or hope. Technically, everyone's agnostic because no one knows for a fact if there is a God or not. Of course. But I believe why people would turn because it's like, what have you got to lose? If you're right, then you have this eternal bliss of heaven or whatever. But if you're wrong, yeah. then there's nothing. So it doesn't it's really matter. It's a hard one, isn't it? Like my grandma, she had heart attacks and she said when she'd come back round, that she remembers seeing herself. An aerial view from yeah. above. And then you hear people like that are near death and they say that life literally flashes before them or... Perhaps that's like people where they were going to die and because of our idea of what happens after death, all your memories start flooding in. But it's mm. like, is that because you're going on to another life or is it or, just because that's what we believe so then your subconscious is I about to... I don't know, to... because you also get deja vu, don't you? And you're like, hmm, I've been here. I feel like I've been here, that's done this. That's a weird concept, yeah. It's closed because I'm not willing to gamble with my soul nor am I ready to take any chances These are just simple life questions And I'm just searching for some answers Like what are we doing here? And what is our purpose? How did we get here? And who made us so perfect? And what happens once we go? Or is this world all really worth it? Questions we don't answer Because apparently we don't really have to There's no purpose to this life And our existence is merely natural Then in that case Please let me ask you Did you create yourself Or was it somebody else who had fashioned you Cause you're a being that's impeccable Faultless and unparalleled You're a product of supreme intelligence And I'm merely being rational for there isn't a camera on this earth that can come close to the human eye Nor a computer that can compete alongside the human mind And if the whole world was to come together we wouldn't be able to create a single fly That's crazy, yeah You can make as much technology as you can but nature in general Oh yeah, you need so that complex. cycle going There's a lot of people that are so-called atheists That when they die start calling for God or start praying When they get in really bad situations Yeah Isn't that something that's either, maybe it's scared They're like, fuck if there is like Just going back to the situation with me and your dad I remember trying all sorts like I know that Nana give me crystals and I'd place them under my bed I wanted my family to continue I wanted that happy ending I wanted you that... wanted to connect your, to your spirituality yeah and I it, it, I even remember like praying but I didn't know who I was praying to I was just desperate when I was probably at my happiest or most positive and optimistic in my life was when not only was I the most routine but every night I used to write a short list of things I was grateful for that day and I'd have like a 30 second prayer for the next day and I don't know who I was praying to yeah. I don't believe in God but I sometimes say the name God and I'd always just have this mindset of being so genuinely positive and I yeah. could direct my gratitude and sometimes I catch myself slipping that as soon as I'm aware of my gratitude I then become happier for that yeah. day of course and I feel like, like that's you what religion get up for is. work every morning and you'll be like oh god here we go again and I think everyone wishes their life away you wish to get to the weekend but realistically you should just wake up and just be grateful to see another day and I feel like practicing gratitude and obviously Muslims that they pray I believe it's three or five times a day yeah. that it's literally just instilling those beliefs and the gratitude and hope and family and 
values and everything. Periodically. Or habitually practicing that gratitude and reflecting yeah. upon what you have mm. as opposed to what you haven't is going to allow you to be just grateful. more content. Just more content, grateful, yeah. As opposed to them chasing hedonistic pleasures because you're always looking for the next best yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. I like his little song it has got going with it. It's very catchy. Yeah, it's like a poem yeah. sort of thing. So many signs, yet we still deny... A science tries to justify that all this could come from none When it's a simple sum Zero plus zero plus zero cannot possibly ever give you one So from where did all this order come? That's one thing real quick before I, I want to keep pausing it That sort of confuses me about the Big Bang Theory I don't get how everything it, within a fraction of a second at light speed the universe expanded from nothing. nothing that's what confuses me especially when i was younger i used to really sit and think like how did the earth become in the earth like how did we become humans and how did anything come from nothing yeah. if nothing was about for yeah. anything to come from it that, that's why i feel mind boggling like it, it gives you an opening it's an to amazing believe. place really that yeah. we live on amazing it, it gives you an opening to believe mm. in oh there could be something more yeah perhaps. But everything has its origins, a maker, a creator of its own. I mean, the only reason you're watching this video is because somebody had to press upload. So we can believe in the Big Bang, but I'd rather believe in he who caused it to explode. Allah, the creator of everything along with every single soul. The ever living, the master, the only one who is in control Unlike his creation, beyond our imagination And no, he's not a man nor does he have any partners in association He's on his own And no, he did not ever leave us alone Just like every manufacturer, he left us with an instruction manual the Qur'an and Islam, and I'm sorry to jump to conclusions, but it's the only one possible. The only definition of God is the one and only supreme being, it's logical. A book with zero contradictions, with miracles that are both scientific and historical. All revealed over 1400 years ago. Like the detailed description of the human embryo. The descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the seventh century. That's crazy. That is that is weird things like that that made me like, what the fuck? Also, talking of the Quran, a lot of people in the last video suggested that I should buy one and have a look into it. And I got the exact one that people suggested. There's a quote in here that I really liked. God does not require of any soul more than what it can afford. All good will be to its own benefit and all evil will be to its own loss. Do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake. Do not place a burden on us like the one you placed on those before us. Do not burden us with what we cannot bear. Pardon us, forgiven us, and have mercy on us. You are our only guardian to grant us victory over the disbelieving people. It's like when I read that initially, I was like, damn. It's sort of like saying, fuck who doesn't care about you and doesn't believe in yeah. you. You have to believe just let that go. Because you hold so much hatred. Yeah, exactly. And do not burden us with what yeah. we cannot handle. I but believe you will be thrown at certain situations because whatever is out there believes that you can get through it and believes there's something greater for you. Yeah. It's basically saying that God will not yeah. give you a problem that you cannot handle. Yeah, that person doesn't deserve what's happened to them. Not, not at all. But knows that person's strong enough to get through it. Yeah. It could be an illness, a breakup of a relationship, it could be a loss of a job but there's always a silver lining of why that's happened and what you can become after that they say 10% of your life's path is what happens and 90% is how you react to it yeah of course yeah of course I haven't read a large majority of this book and I will be having a look as time goes on if you would like to get one basically the same one that people were recommending I'll put a link in the description subscribe as well because then I put stuff on my community page so I'll put some quotes and stuff that I read eggs holding firm the earth below and the two seas that don't mix in a complete separate flow to the planets in orbit alternating night and day as they stay in flow the expansion of the universe and the creation of everything from H2O to the stories of the past and the preservation of Pharaoh to identifying the lowest point in the land where Persia defeated Rome the gushing fluid that created man in the glands between the ribs and the backbone and not a word has changed it's still the same so please explain how all this was known over 1400 years ago to a man who couldn't read or write as he would recite whatever the angels spoke 
And if you still don't believe, please try to come up with something that's even close. But you can't, so we took God as a mockery and his messengers as a joke. Muhammad could not read or write. How somebody who can't read or write gonna start a religion? Dismiss the scriptures as legends and tales of the ancient folk as we live life according to our whims, desires, and hopes. Saying this life is the only home we will ever know We will live then die then simply turn to bones Yo, low Correction, after the grass dies the rain arrives and it regrows And Allah promises to do the same thing to your very soul Energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transferred So when you die, that energy has to go yeah. somewhere by definition And now, people does call it, go, it spirits, don't they? Does people call it spirits? Now could it be, if we're all wrong, and there it is just eternal bliss The same way as it was before you was born Then does the energy transfer into like the soil and then it becomes yeah. worm me and it becomes a part of the earth again i don't know or does something happen to your I don't, soul i don't i don't know it's all again I mean, everything science is, it's all, is not there for that one exactly and like, it's all theoretical but it's because no one can come back to tell you and the people that are alive that have had near-death experiences or that like had heart attacks and temporarily died and have these mm. super natural experiences could it be things that like we're told in our life like we're told about the afterlife and we're told in heaven and hell and so then when you die and then you come back your soul hasn't gone out yet so it's like your subconscious telling you what it believes it saw because it was sort of like a figment yeah. of your imagination imagine you're a person that actually could speak or hear spirits like imagine what that must feel like and and no one believe you yeah that's what i mean it's it's like to have that such deep personal experience yeah. that's irrefutable and, and like, everyone just laughs at you then it makes you think you're like you're crazy and you start second guessing yourself yeah because you have like young children don't they they're very open-minded they always have that special friend that they talk to but yeah. there's no one there do you get what i mean i don't necessarily believe in spirits or ghosts or an afterlife perhaps i i'm open to the idea it could very much exist and perhaps later on in my life i'll figure that out i remember saying to you back last year when i went to the the medium and you was like oh well they clearly googled you or they had a, like a camera as soon as you walked in detected your face deep so i don't yeah. know they had nothing i hadn't pre-booked i hadn't i don't know done i'd have to experience that myself. and she knew i mean i told you the stuff she knew and it was it was bang on point but also how could such a large amount of people over a long enough time scale have such intimate real experiences of ghosts or spirits or paranormal things or coming back from the afterlife after they die like how can it be a universal thing and nothing be there because mm. it's not like you've just got a, like a weird select esoteric group of people like that have a certain set of beliefs that are preaching this there's no evidence of it of course but like not everyone's so lying many, uh, do you know what i mean different experiences but it also makes you think like your dreams obviously some of that can feel very real have you ever had that one where you're falling and then you wake up yeah oh that's you see that's the thing like what's that about it's impossible to die in a dream and still be alive because <laughs> your brain can only conceptualize what it knows now it could be literally an accumulation of multiple things but like it has to create images out of something and that's why no one has ever died in their dreams because the second like you hit the floor or something happens, you wake up. If you literally do die in your sleep, you're dead. If you're dead, you're not gonna know. <laughs> Exactly. Do you ever have a reoccurring dream? I've always had this dream when I was younger. My body would get bigger and bigger to the point of really uncomfortable and I would just keep growing and growing and growing. But there's someone I spoke to and they said they had a very similar dream. It's really weird. But I've had this since child. Don't know what it's about. No idea. No idea. <laughs> and bring you back from your very fingertips to your toes. As the all-seeing supreme being watches us so close and we are surely being tested in our wealth, our health, and our self and everything that we've been blessed with. So believe, for we will surely be resurrected and be brought back to our Lord and account for every single deed as he hands us our books and orders us to read. From the bad to the good and everything in between You yourself are sufficient for your own accountability So don't be mad at me You are the one who thought he wouldn't come back to me I gave you a whole life long to search after me But you were busy in all that which was temporary So read And glad tidings to all those who believed And if you disbelieve Read and don't let that day be the first day you find out what your life really means. Read. Yeah. It's good. 
I like yeah. that. Said that you can't take any of these things to the grave, which is true. Yeah. And everything on earth is temporary. Everyone wants the next best thing. Everyone thinks the grass is greener. I need this. I need that. I need that. And always chase, 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 chase. The people that chase more, are they generally happy? Hmm. Or they're just trying to find something to make themselves happy? And there was a bit that it said about you're sufficient for your own accountability. Yeah. I fuck with that because yeah. it's like the only way I've progressed in my life or been able to reflect and improve and stop certain cycles or bad things from happening for me. Even if I didn't deserve it, it yeah. wasn't my fault. Of course. I couldn't have avoided whatever. It's to take accountability. You're never going to learn if you blame other people your whole life. I think that's something to take away is to never compromise your values. Always trust your gut. Be righteous within everything you do and take accountability for everything that happens to you. Good, bad, whatever. You have this clear vision of what to take from it and how to move forward. Yeah. That's why I feel like people kill themselves or get really depressed because they're either stuck in the past and they can't take steps going forward whereas if you always know whatever happened to me there's always a reality where you can put one foot in front of the other even if it's very 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 mm. slow you'll never succumb to being in a depressive state forever or deleting yourself it's it's easier said than done isn't it like i know i've been in a really bad place and i know for certain if i didn't have you boys wasn't quite sure where it'd be. If you've got no one around you and it's no one for to... that support, and like I said to you, you was a massive support to me. Like just the little things, like just a want a cup of tea, mum. Should we watch a series? Affirmations of love. They don't make me feel like I was alone. Like yeah. you was in it with me. We didn't have to talk. We didn't have to get into anything. It was just knowing you was there. There. Present. I just feel like this generation coming up, they're just more clued up about everything. Like what your knowledge of your age is un unreal. Like I could never think of the age of 21, the way you articulate yourself and what you know. And, and I don't know if that's because you have the, the whole world yeah. web sitting in front of you now. I think it's also like they say, the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Yeah. And sometimes I think, oh, I'm intelligent or oh, I've learned this or you know what, I'm very mature. Or, I'm... I think that's what it is. It's my quest for learning. It, people get blinded in their ignorance yeah. to think they know it all and they're the people that never progress forward oh, yeah. I know I know nothing about the world I don't You've think I'm wise you so many more experiences I don't, yeah I don't think have. I'm wise I don't think anything I think maybe I've got a particular mindset that I'm proud of that always allows me to, but to learn that's because but... you have good morals and you're a good person and you take accountability for what you do literally everything you, yeah I'm not ashamed to say I can learn so much from a 15 year old or a 21 year old yeah, you know I, I know, work with but... children that are 6 and 7 and they come to me with things and I'm like wow at the end of the day you might have more experience on the planet yeah. but we're all a genuine student of life but a lot of people they're scared of moving forward scared of taking scared a, of you learning know, new things yeah scared or, of coming scared out of that comfort or, zone or, or scared of failing some people think they're right on everything in order to have a good discussion or a good conversation you have to be open to listening to both sides like a lot of people just answer to respond they're not actually listening to what oh, that yeah. person's saying I always say you've been given two ears and one mouth for yeah. a reason use them within yeah. and we all have moments of ignorance where oh, we, yeah. we stand for what we're saying and we will not take any other answer. Everything's a learning curve, but as long as you're open-minded and you're looking to learn things every day, you'll go far. You'll go far. Yeah. Relating it back to this video, what you said, like some people feel that they get pushed to that edge because they've got no one else. Yeah. Whereas if you feel that there's someone looking down on you or you know that he's not going to give you something, nothing you can't handle, it'll give you a certain hope mm. or strength for something to carry on because everyone has a story or going through something in life but if you have that same person that lives that cycle oh whoa me start being accountable of why you are so lonely and why you are so down mm. you're the only person in your life that can change it you have to live with your yourself forever so you need to be happy and content with, and content every content with action everything that in your life if you, if you believe in a higher power or that there's someone testing you, or that there's a reward for this, mm. and it gives you hope and faith and gratitude. Good luck and... to them. Yeah. We move. Good. Right, as I say, I'm going to give this more of a read, so if you'd like the exact same one I've got and to read more, then I will put a link in the description down below. If you'd like to hear more from us, we did a video right here of my mum reacts to Tate on Islam. Have a good one. Good night.